Hello there people and good morning, it's Saturday morning in Sweden, this is Christian and I'm at Fusion for City with an empty, empty workspace, nothing is in here, because we're gonna have a look at STL, so this is not a design thing, I'm just gonna show you a thing I found and can be a bit confusing if you're new and to, uh, yeah, yeah, you try to import STLs and of course Fusion does a bad job, and of course it's Fusion's fault, but we'll have a look at that. We're gonna start with Mesh, click on the Mesh tool. We're going to import them in the insert mesh. I'm going to select this here. I'm sorry to the person who has created this thing because it's slightly broken. We'll see why. I'm going to import this and just going to hit OK for now. Do nothing special. And we got the mesh in here. And it's inside of the bodies. We're not open now. So a lot of people just do like, oh, I have inserted it. I want to convert it. So I do modify, uh, convert mesh. Click on the body and hit OK. And wait for Fusion to think. And this happens. There's something really strange is going on with her. And of course, the first reaction people have is that Fusion is broken since it's been updated or something. Oh, this this is this is Fusion's fault. It's always the software faults. It's never user errors or bad STL files, which is it's in this case. So we're gonna start over, crash this out. And once again, go over to the mesh, we're gonna insert and insert all the file. And before we do anything else, I'm going to up the origin point to see how it is. It's off here. Uh, this is a circular pod, which you would create with Revolve tool normally. So I want to do some things with this. Of course, you can, if you happen to import an STL with the Z direction, the Z axis are wrong, you can simply flip it here. There are some input. Check the unit is imported the correct size. And now I want to center it. So let's do center. Of course, the problem is the center it drops down through the floor, so I'm going to move it to ground like that. So I get it nicely centered and grounded. So I'm going to hit OK. Before I do any other tools, I'm going to open my bodies. It's a two bit bad, but it's not expanded normally because if you expand this, you will see the yellow warning. There's a warning of STL. We're going to click this one. Sorry, I'm not do repair this. Move it over. Uh, mesh is not orientated. Orient oriented. Uh, straight spinning. Uh, mesh does not have a positive volume. So what's going on here? You can see when I convert it, it created some really strange things. So what you do just for fun, this is the fun I like to do. Uh, do a section analysis, select any plane here, and we can hit OK. So it goes away. Uh, you can see the problem. This mesh has a lot of internal things going on, which we of course doesn't want because most probably some of these triangles are connected to triangles on the outside, and when you try to convert it. Uh, Fusion goes bananas. You will also get errors in the mesh mixer and other software. A look at a file like this one. Because we don't want this inside here. It most probably if you look at this you can see it's created like a uh, different parts stacked on top of each other, revolve parts. And then in the final part, whatever software we used, we have exported it like an STL. And by mistake that software has added all these things inside here. So we go back, I'm going to remove this one, let's delete it on the other. Now we know there are internal crap inside this. So we can do, we can do uh, two ways. We have repair up here in the menu, or we can just click this. The thing it is that in most cases, it's the repair type, repair type is a stitch and move, which I don't want here because what I can see, there's nothing broken on the outside, but I want it to remove everything inside. So I want to wrap the part. It wraps everything on the outside. I think it tells you what you do. Yeah, make some changes, uh, stitch in, and also wrap the surface of a mesh body. All in the structure are destroyed. Yes, that's one or two. So gonna hit OK, and we can once again uh, do a section. So you can get that one. Now we can see we have nothing inside of a body. That's good. Console. So what you can do now, if you have a, I'm gonna hide that one. Uh, if you have a free version, we can do modify. Convert over personal license. Click this body, hit OK. And now we got basically what we did, got earlier when we converted meshes. We get a lot of triangles. Um, yeah, it works. So in this case, I would most probably just use this for reference to remake it because if you have a look at this, you look at this figure top, you can see this thing here. It looks a bit, you're going to see it a bit clearer when I do the, the paid version. Uh, conversion but these are you can see that the triangles are a bit strange and tilted and otherwise I don't know what software I use to create it. but as always you can use it for reference but we're not going to go back we're going to look at this delete for convert so we still have our mesh we're going to go in and generate face groups we're going to now do the paid workflow you want to call that 
Uh, because it has circular faces, I have noticed that the accurate the type is the best. Select the body and hit OK. I don't change anything more. We wait for Fusion doing some thinking. And now we get some face groups. But now we can help. We can do the conversion now, but it will make every part of this as single faces. But yeah, if we have a look, we can see this is a revolve face. That should be one face. We can go in here and use combine face groups. And simply select all the faces we as a user can see are the same. You can tinker all you want with the settings and stuff as well. Way. Hit OK. So we got one face there. And have a look at the inside here. I know there's someone. Yeah, you can see the fillet here is a bit broken. If you can't see where things are, you can use the mouse. And you can see it highlights the faces. So this should be one face. This is just a simple inside revolved uh, fillet. You can do combine face groups. Once again, these three. One, two, three selected. Okay, that was one face. We have the same thing over here. Three faces. And we should have one more. There you are. We're going to do it. And one, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Let's go back home. Uh, I don't care about the top up here because of that. You look at that. That's one face, one face, one face, one face. Check every like revolve faces here. That's one face. That's one, one, one. But that's good. I like it. Now we're going to do convert, convert mesh parametric, but we're going to lose, choose the prismatic version. Select like this, uh, give Fusion some time to think, and we have a nice prismatic version. Still, you don't have a timeline with dimensions and stuff like that, but you can do things like uh, a push-pull. We can take this and move it out one millimeter, no problem. You can start doing things with it. Uh, what I mentioned about, I would most probably use to use a simple remodeling, but not made many parts, so you can see. It's like a revolved basic body, and then you have a tabs down here, because if you have a look on top on this, this looks a bit strange. This is not Fusion's fault. This is the result of the design process that somebody had used to create this. If you want this, yes, you can do it. But the important thing, uh, when you port, put, uh, put SDLs in, let's go move back so you can see things. Uh, if you're going to import SDLs, check that they're not broken before you try to convert them, or they are. Uh, I'll notice a lot of SDLs I download. A lot, a lot, I don't not download too many SDLs, but the ones I download, in a lot of cases, there are faces inside the body, and that will confuse Fusion because it doesn't know how to pick it there. So, I hope this can help some of you. This is just a short video on SDLs. With that said, take care, see you around, and goodbye.